Remember this video from November? And in this video clip, we showcased some of the most powerful scientific evidence for young Earth creation. Wait, some what for young Earth creation? Well, it took three people over three hours to try and take down one 20-minute video of mine. That's an 11 to 1 ratio of talk to actual facts. And would you believe it? They've tried it again. But since I value you a time more than they do, I'm going to show you why their three-hour tantrum was actually just one long rescue device for a completely insane theory. So let's see if their arguments have improved since the last time they tried to debunk reality and failed. But at least this time it's only two against one, I guess. Shut up and sit down, you big bald f***. Please subscribe. Have a look at this. Creaky Blinder, he attempted to address the salt accumulation we did a full video response to him and then he attempted a 20 minute response to our three and a half hour video well donnie you can laugh as smugly as you want to because i don't see what's funny 20 minutes was all i needed i can't help it if you lot feel the need to tag team my videos and still fail to debunk anything i said the thing is i love it when people respond to my content because then i get to not only show my viewers just how wrong you are but we all get a good laugh for how ridiculous you are as well. Now, if I remember correctly, this video is me responding to you, responding to me, responding to you, responding to me, I think. And you won't be surprised, Matt, but what we got was dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge, the five Ds of evolutionary dodgeball. Were well, you so miffed I only made the 20-minute response, but to clear it up, it wasn't a dodge at all. It's just, you know, I've got a life. And you're just not that important to me, nor is there anything you've got to say. I do this because it's fun. And I've got this weird burning desire to point out when people like you are wrong. So uh, let's get to the wrong, shall we? I'm expecting lots of it. And so, Creaky Blinder, measured reality, can't present it on this. Not a doctor. Sodium enters the oceans faster than it leaves. Implication, ocean salinity limits the age of the oceans. Just like depleting comets puts a shelf life life on the age of the solar system. Very basic. Uh, implication again, and by extension, the Earth. So far less than evolutionary time scales, billions of years. Critics' response. Hand-waving appeals to unmeasured removal mechanisms. Conclusion. The salt in the sea evidence is a quantifiable, data-driven argument supporting a young Earth and evolutionary rebuttals rely on faith and unobserved equilibria, not science. Boring and wrong. What a combination. Geologists have identified several sinks for sodium, including iron exchange and clay materials and hydrothermal circulation through the oceanic crust, which keep the ocean in a steady state for millions of years. And for absolute clarity, and to explain it to Donnie, who clearly doesn't understand this, scientists are people who study things like physics, biology, chemistry, not people who look at the Bible and then have to lie their way to a conclusion they think backs up their thoughts on the age of the Earth. So here's what's interesting. All of your so-called means or rescue devices that people like Creaky Blinder, Simon Dan, Aaron Raw, Professor Dave, that they would look to, to counterbalance, you could actually give them all of those and, and they're still not going to be able to counterbalance based on the amount of salt coming into the oceans. Well, they're not so-called means, they're scientifically proven means. Remember science, that thing I briefly explained earlier? And they aren't my claims, or Simon Dan's, or Professor Dave's, or Aaron Ra's. They are scientific facts that are well established. And you said something about the salt that enters the oceans, well, what about all the salt that leaves? The problem is for you lot is that your baseless assumptions are flawed from the get-go because you seem to think that the rate at which salt enters and leaves the oceans is a constant. Well, it isn't. Even the most conservative mainstream geochemical studies admit that the net sodium flux is positive, meaning the oceans are accumulating salt faster than they are losing it. That accumulation rate is inconsistent with an ancient earth. <laughs> Creationists just love to cite net positive flux, but they completely ignore the fact 
that the ocean is a steady state system. Sodium doesn't just sit there, it's removed through processes that take a very long time to measure. Now, if we stayed with creationist logic, we could use other elements to prove that the Earth is even younger. For example, if we used aluminium, the Earth would only be 100 years old. If we used iron, it would only be 140 years old. Now, obviously, the Earth isn't 100 years old. These numbers just show how long an element stays in the water before a chemical reaction pulls it out. Unless one invokes unmeasured or hidden sinks, again, rescue devices with no physical verification. Notice this. Even if we accept every one of Cleek, uh, Creaky Blinders' proposed removal mechanisms and then double them. <laughs> so everything he invokes, take them, double them. Just accept them for sake of argument, Matt. It still doesn't offset the measured input rate. Right, they'll say it again. Wrong. Sorry, force of habit. They are not my claims. I just pass on the information I find from verifiable scientific sources. And we can absolutely measure both the concentrations of sodium in the ocean and the activity of its sinks. Why do you think we can't? Is it because if you admit that we can, it kind of destroys the whole 6,000-year narrative? This is analogous to the rescue devices employed by people like Creaky Blinder Matt. It's like being in a sinking boat with a hole the size of a basketball, okay? So you're in a boat, it's sinking, there's a ton of water gushing in because there's just a hole the size of a basketball. And then you're trying to bail it out, you got a little teaspoon, Matt. Maybe there's a couple of us and we're just like, come on, Matt, hurry up, you know, get that water out of the boat. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's gushing in through that hole the size of a a basketball so a creaky blinder and these other uh proponents of fish to fisherman evolution the rescue devices or the mechanisms to remove the salt that's akin to basically just taking a teaspoon of water right it ain't gonna save the day there's no counterbalance yeah i can tell you the kent hovind fan boy. not a doctor nobody and i mean nobody thinks fish became fishermen because that's really stupid, and all it does is expose just how clueless you actually are every time you say it. Now, you mentioned something interesting then, something about evoking unseen things and using them as an argument, or to simplify it further, using things that have no evidence to support their existence, which I haven't anyway. But this is going somewhere. How is that any different from you lot screaming, God did it, every time you fail to fit four and a half billion years of Earth being here into 6,000 years. Matt, have a look at this dodge from Creaky Blinder, okay? If my video is such a dodge, why have you wasted three hours of your life that you're never gonna get back responding to it? And with this video, about another hour-ish, it doesn't make any sense, but neither do you, so carry on. Okay. So, again, see, a lot of this with, with the, the bigger-named evolutionists, which is why, again, we respect and I appreciate conspiracy or culture cat because he'd be considered a more prominent evolutionist and he's been around for a while, but he actually gets into the debate coliseum and engages these issues rather than only making videos where he like Creaky Blinder, Dodge Duck Dip Dive and Dodge, Misrepresent, Straw Man. But, but nothing and none taken, by the way. But you're right, Culture Cat is an awesome human being. So are you saying that because I don't debate people like you, that my arguments aren't valid? Because that's what it sounded like. Now, don't misunderstand me. I know that being a good debater is a skill in itself, and Katz is very, very good at it. But in my humble opinion, debates between young earth creationists and us, or flat earthers and us, are completely pointless. They almost always turn into a shit show and resemble a pigeon playing chess. They, or you as the case may be, just shit all over the board and claim victory. Pretty much what you've been doing in this video, so you should already be familiar. Unfortunately for Guardians of Common Descent, Conspiracy Cats, he'd be considered an authority in the sense that Firstly, he popularized ERVs years ago. Wait, 
Cats popularised endogenous retroviruses? Well, I'm impressed. I always thought they were discovered in the late 60s. Cats wasn't even alive then. And no, neither was I before any of you smart asses say otherwise. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> Yet. But it is weird, though, that you would bring up something that proves you wrong. Again. It's becoming a bit of a habit, isn't it? Secondly, he's someone that they would actually look to for answers. Similar to how most evolutionists now are looking to Guts at Gibbon. Hmm, Guts at Gibbon. You mean Erica, who's got a master's of research in primate biology, behavior, and conservation. So a scientist then. Why on earth would we trust an actual scientist about science? And don't think I haven't noticed that you haven't even started playing my video yet. You think you can trick me into making a longer response, don't you? Well, no. I'll cut you off any time I feel like it. Because what you fail to take into account is that people are here to laugh at people like you. And I bet they already are. So it makes no difference how much of your video I respond to. As long as I can make people laugh or at the very least smile, then I've done my job. For example, in my premiere on the heat problem, there are several critics, Sydney Raptor, The Analog Zone, just many critics, okay, Lorraine. Erica, I mean, she's made two really good videos explaining why the heat problem doesn't help you the way you think it does. Oop, actually, make that three videos. Just type the heat problem into YouTube, they're right there for you. A bunch in the live chat. Nobody was actually engaging anything that I was saying. Sydney Raptor was dodging, not even addressing the scientific reality that you require accelerated decay. We can discuss how much, but accelerated decay to account for radio halos. We have helium and zircon crystals. We've debunked their best rescue devices, the C14 and diamonds, and nobody was actually challenging that data, which tells me they don't really have an answer. But yeah, watch uh, Creaky Blinders massive dodge here. It's kind of entered. He's got some good rhetoric and he's kind of entertaining to listen to. So. Credit where credit is due. He'd, he'd be fun to have a discussion with. Oh, thanks. But if you think that that's going to work on me, trust me, it won't. Nathan Oakley tried saying nice things about me as well, but he's still wrong, and so are you. Okay, watch, listen to this. Respond to one 12 minute video. This is another challenge I want to issue to the ACA Lucius, like Redeem Zoomer. Let's see your response. I responded, and I genuinely hope that you find the information I shared to be helpful. So here's the paper I highly recommend. Yeah, I know, I know, I interrupt far too often and he hasn't even said anything yet, but was it me that sped that up and made it really annoying? Or was it them? I can't actually remember. Maybe it was both. But he's just going to completely dodge it here. Then reading, we can see if Redeem Zoomer can refute it. <laughs> helium diffusion rates before accelerated nuclear decay. So we, we know the rates of helium diffusion, and these zircon crystals are supposedly billions of years old, and uranium to lag gives off. Helium, helium is produced, it can move through rocks. Since rocks are porous, the gas escapes through the rocks, and helium being a slippery molecule, uh, we should find the kind of helium that we have in these zircon crystals because billions of years you have plenty of time for the helium to basically leak out and escape into the atmosphere. Mm. Now, the core issue of the argument about helium and zircon crystals is that it's based on yet another flawed assumption. The claim is that because helium is a tiny slippery atom, it should diffuse out the crystals of millions of years. The claim is that because helium is a tiny slippery atom, it should diffuse out the crystals of millions of years. Oh, and slow him down a bit. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, that's really bloody annoying. I'll never do it again. I promise. Matt, who names their child after something you wipe your dirty boots on? <laughs> So this is us responding to his video. So we'll give a brief response, but he's going to dodge the response. Watch. That radioactive decay rays were much faster in the past. And this is just another ad hoc explanation that violates established physics. It's another glorious example of a self-refuting premise. Dr. Russell Humphreys has very comprehensively address all of these objections and i'm going to show people i'm going to direct them to a, an article on creation.com remember earlier when i said i would dismiss any claim they put forward from the bible well the same applies to creationist websites because whoever wrote that paper already believes the same things you do or their paper would have been published in an actual scientific journal not on a creationist website and the explanation i gave in my original video still stands thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video that's it that was the outro to my video. You're not going to sit there and tell me that it's taken two of you an hour and 33 minutes to respond to the outro of my video. So he didn't even uh, play the it. responses because <laughs> the responses were made through people like Dr. Russell Humphreys, Dr. Andrew Snelling. We just had Dr. Andrew Snelling on. And this was just a horrible worthless rebuttal obviously it's it's not helpful to anybody hang on a second and please excuse me for being so picky but you can't have your cake and eat it now either i didn't reboot anything or my rebuttal was what did you say worthless can't be both can it you have one line here billions of years one line here six thousand years let's test 
the amount of helium in zircon crystals. As you go from uranium to lead, uranium being your parent isotope, lead being your daughter isotope, a byproduct during that chain is what? Helium. It's a very slippery atom. It moves through quickly and escapes into the atmosphere. N uh, based on known helium diffusion rates, how much helium do we find in these zircon crystals? And does it fit the billions of years model or the 6,000 years model? Billions of years. And what about the heat problem you can't solve without evoking miracles? They even admit in their own technical papers suggesting that God must have performed a cooling miracle to keep the ark from melting. So maybe that's why I didn't bother responding to it in my last video, because it's completely insane to even entertain the idea. Anyways, his argument about, well, they're assuming certain things. And if you have different temperatures in the past, maybe colder, maybe hotter, but they'd have to appeal to colder temperatures in the past, not as hot, because the hotter the zircon, the, the hotter the temperature, the, the more quickly the helium's going to escape, right, Matt? Exactly. Whoa, Matt speaks. And again, let me say, these are not my arguments. They are established scientific facts. I wonder if they realize they're accidentally arguing against themselves. If the Earth were hotter in the past, the helium would have left the zircons even faster. Your own model needs the Earth to be a, a literal furnace. Now, if you take billions of years of radioactive decay and squash it into a few days or weeks, you create a heat problem which is impossible to ignore as much as young earth creationists try to <laughs> if we can plant some seeds and get people rethinking what they believe about origins based on us doing debates we're gonna keep doing debates why unless of course you like being made a fool of every time somebody like me responds to one of your videos now talking about donnie's other videos it turns out that I'm their new favorite guy on YouTube. I literally just found this out. No, hang on a second, rewind. I only knew about this video in the first place because Donnie was kind enough, or maybe stupid enough, to tag me in his community post, which I will link below so you can go and have a look for yourself. Because as it turns out, they're only gonna be doing another response to one of my videos in January. I can't wait to see which one. I bet it'll be this or maybe a Kent Oven video. But Ben Kissass, K uh, Kissling, but Ben, the guy who was in the last response they made, is going to be back to help Donnie out. And let's be honest, he needs more help than a flat earther. Like the one in this video. Don't forget to like my smash button and subscribe if you're new. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you again in 2026. Happy New Year and for the final time in 2025, love you. Bye.